Hey guys, this is Pastor Howard. I wanted to come to you this evening and give you a word from the Lord. I feel like I got a word, an extraordinary word for someone maybe. Uh, I'm thinking of the remnant that was left in Jerusalem in Nehemiah's day. They were in captivity, God's people, Judah, they were in captivity because of disobedience. And while they were in captivity, some escaped, the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 1. And those that escaped, they were in bad shape. Hecla, the, the, the father of Nehemiah, speaks about this. And some of Nehemiah's cohorts come from Jerusalem. Nehemiah is in the province of Babylon. He's there for the word of God's sake, but he's also there because he was the king's cupbearer. When exile occurred, when Jerusalem was overtaken, Babylon took the wisest. They took the strongest men and they took them to Babylon and 70 years, that's a lifespan. And Nehemiah became the king's cupbearer. In that day and time, a cupbearer was someone that drank and ate the food. And if they didn't die, then the king could drink it or eat it. So that was his occupation. He was the king's cupbearer. And it might sound a little juvenile, but it was a big, big position for Nehemiah because it put him before the king. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, without a vision, my people perish. Another translation says, without a a vision, a prophetic revelation, a vision from God, my people are destroyed. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, my people are destroyed because they don't know the word. They don't have the word in their heart. So Nehemiah is the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah chapter 1. And Nehemiah asked his cohorts, he said, how is Ju Judah and Jerusalem? How are they doing? And his friend said, the walls of Jerusalem are in shambles. The people of Judah are in despair. The gates are broken down. And the Bible says that Nehemiah, after hearing that report, he asked about the report. He asked him how it was doing. They gave him the report. And the Bible says that Nehemiah started praying and fasting and seeking God. He, he started seeking the Lord. And he went before the king. Now, when you go before a king, you want to be anointed. A king can take your head off at any time. They can do whatever they want to. So Nehemiah goes before the king, and Nehemiah comes before the king with a sad countenance. And that wasn't a good thing, usually, when you came before a king. They could behead you right there. But the king had a rapport with Nehemiah, and he asked Nehemiah, he said, what's wrong? And Nehemiah told him about his home country. The king, Nehemiah had so much favor, the king gave him all the resources to go back to Jerusalem and build the walls, fix the gates, repair, repair the breach. So Nehemiah goes off and he starts rebuilding the wall. The scripture says that Nehemiah rounded the people up. He didn't tell them, a lot of people, about his vision because some people can't handle a vision. But he, he, he just shared with a few, and he went back and started rebuilding the wall. 
But before he started rebuilding, he said to the people, he said, let us, let us, let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. Let us make a difference. Let us rise up and build. Let us have a prophetic vision. Let us do something for God. And the scriptures say that the, the people gathered around Nehemiah and the enemy was so angry. I can remember when we were relocating the first church that I pastored and we were relocating the building, relocating everything, building a new building. And this person came by the road. He said, I'm going to burn this place down. He said, some, she said some choice words. She said, there won't be a church here. And I didn't say a whole lot, but I said, yeah, there will be. There'll be a church here. There'll be a church here. Listen, if you've got a vision from God, nothing can stop that. If you'll stay to the vision, write it down, put it in a banner, make it clear so people can read it and get on board with you. So we do that, and we, we are people of love and prayer and grace, and we, we want to make that make a difference in people's lives. So we, I just challenge you this week, this week, Crane Eater, to ask someone, this is my challenge, ask, this is going to be a life changer for someone, ask someone that you know might not be doing good, ask them, don't ask them how they're doing because they can just say, fine, what's going on in your life? That's a good open-ended question. They can't just say, yeah, no. When you say, what's going on in your life? Tell me about your what's going on. That's what Nehemiah did. And that he got that report. And he got that report. And he went to Jerusalem after he had the king. He was the king's cupbearer. He was taking care of the king. And the king took care of Nehemiah. I heard Joel Osteen say it this week. He said, we need to always expect extraordinary blessings overflowing blessings, blessings that you can't generate, blessings that you can't, that you can't conjure up. That's what God can do. Let's trust him with it. Let's get on board. Let's be a people of love, prayer, and grace. Let's be a people that win souls to the kingdom of the Lord. Let's ask someone how they're doing. How are you doing today? Tell me, What's going on? See what happens. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the power of your spirit and the grace that abounds just in your name, in your name, God, I pray that it would just supersede any artificial thing, anything that is superficial in someone's life, and that, Lord God, that you would bombard them with your grace and with your love right now. Allow the power of God to come forth. Jesus, minister, manifest yourself in your people, Lord, right now. For we know it's not by might nor by power, but it's by thine spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. All of heaven's army back up, the Lord saying, it's not by might, not by power, but it's by thine spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.